How's everybody doing tonight? Hope you're doing good. Hope you're wearing your masks. Tonight will be my 17th discussion. I will be speaking with Seth Babb of Funeral Diner, Sterling Says, Last Good Sleep, and Takaru. Uh, also co-founder of Repeater Records, who have been, just put out the You and I discography, uh, double LP. Can't wait to talk about that. Uh, so hope everybody's good. Uh, hope everybody's safe. I'm just waiting for him to come on. Should be here any minute. There we go. Hey. How you doing, Seth? How are you? Good. How are you? What's going on? Not much. Just, uh... It's, uh, I'm still I'm moving into a new apartment still, so there's going to be some boxes in the background. It's so. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you once again for doing this. I, I appreciate you taking the time out to uh, uh, talk a little uh, about the scene, old and new, and, and what, what you've been up to uh, nowadays also. Um, I really appreciate it, and uh, I was psyched that you said yes, and uh, I'm glad to have you. Thanks. I'm just glad to, glad to talk about it. That um, I, I was thinking about it. I think that Connecticut, I think that Connecticut, uh, the, the, the rehearsal room show that you have the video of, yeah, might be the first video of Funeral Diner with me in it. Oh, really? Yeah, that I know of. Yeah, um, that was uh, was that two thousand? It's got it had to be around two thousand two, two thousand three, or two thousand two two. Yeah. Yeah that that show was uh an insane lineup too. It was crazy good. <laughs> yeah, that was uh I think it was uh Falls Under April, um Funeral Diner, Daughters, Ampere, uh Light the Fuse and Run and Hot Cross I think played that show, which is like mind blowing to to say that lineup right there. No. Yeah, it was crazy. It was a good show. Um and yeah, anyway. <laughs> so that's that was, like, I think that might be the first uh First footage with me in the band. <laughs> yeah, well, wow, that's awesome. Um, now, how many times did you um, tour uh, over in the East Coast? Um, we did three tours, so four four tours all together. Three with me. With one with, uh, with Takaru as well. Uh, Takaru just once. Just once. Yeah, just once. No, that one time or twice. No, twice. Yeah, we we did two times. Yeah. One time with Tino Albano, one time with Bioshock. Yeah, I, I, mi I missed the Takaro. I was, like, so bummed that I didn't get to go t to that show. Um, where Did you play Connecticut and Massachusetts on the, on the uh, Takaro tour? Yeah, I don't totally remember all the details of the East Coast on that tour, but we did play, we did play Massachusetts for sure. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that was. It was a while ago, and I yeah <laughs> talk about that band that much. Yeah, because what happened with the singer later was ugly. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so um, where were you? Uh, where were you brought up? Um, and and um, how did how did you first start getting into music? Um, I I'm from I'm from California. Um, but I'm from the Central Coast area. I'm from a very rural, rural place. Um, yeah. Lockwood, middle of nowhere. And uh, and I, I my my dad's a musician, and he's always been into music. So I uh, I kind of you know started listening to his music. Of course, as a lot of people do growing up, and he was into you know he was into like Tom Petty, Beatles, typical dad stuff yeah but he's also he's also um 
he's a, he's a musician. He's a drummer. He's a great great drummer, and uh, he's always played in bands too. So he, he had a, a little bit further reach, you know, some sort of like more more uh, like Flying Burrito Brothers, the band. He was into that sort of stuff too. Yeah. So that was where uh, I, I that's where I started listening to music, and then then um, Nirvana was a big eye opener. Yeah. In the early nineties for me. And what what age were you when you when you heard Nirvana? I was uh, thirteen. Thirteen. When I heard Nirvana, and uh, yeah, thirteen when I heard Nirvana, and then that was kind of that kind of like opened up <laughs> the world. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear that. I hear that a lot. That Nirvana really like. Um... Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, 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 you know, if you're if you're our age or you know, or close to our age, then it's it's a pretty uh pretty normal way that you know we got into music. Yeah, at that I also hear like skateboarding kind of, um, yeah. you know. For were sure. you a, were you a skateboarder back in the day? Got in, got into skateboarding and then National Magazine and uh, had all the music reviews and and uh, uh, ads and stuff, and you just start listening to that and like so yeah. So I got I got into Wu Tang Clan in the early '90s too because of Thrasher and yeah, uh, but then also you know a bunch of heavier music and um, pop punk and stuff all all at the same time and yeah yeah um yeah. so what was the what was the like when you first started hearing like heavier bands what was like the first band that really like was like oh i want i want to do this kind of music um I, you know probably it was it was it was i i'd have to say um i would say snapcase probably was what really like that was like the heaviest band that I heard that I was like, oh, wow, I yeah. this, I got to do this. Like, <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, like, the, um, specifically the, uh, the, uh, the uh, California Takeover live yeah. uh, compilation. Like, those, those Snapcase songs were, like, unreal to me. And I, that was like, when I, I was like, I want to, I want to start playing in bands for sure. Yeah. Did you did you end up getting to see Snapcase when they were uh, back then in California? Yeah, I saw Snapcase a few times. Um, I saw them in I saw them in, in San Francisco uh, on the Progression Tour and Learning Tour, and then I saw them at uh, I saw them at Crazy Fest. I went to, to Crazy Fest '99 and saw them there too. That was... Yeah. Um, did uh, Did you you heard about them just doing uh, uh, what was it last year or the year before they they did that reunion California Takeover show? Yeah. It was the um I I didn't make it to the California Takeover show but they did a one off with uh with Gouge Away. Oh I really? To, I did get to go to. Oh, I that's awesome. From a couple of years ago, and then I missed the, I was out of town when California Takeover. Uh, yeah. Again, so I missed that. And I, um, yeah. How how were they how were they sounding nowadays since it's been so long since, like amazing. nothing happened. Like nothing passed. Like they sounded amazing. Like they were just they were so good and uh, the. Uh, the singer, like halfway through, the singer was like, "All right, we're gonna do some, we're gonna do some new songs." And then the place got quiet, and he was like, "No, I'm just fucking with you." <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> uh, uh, that's great. Um, yeah, I get to I get to see Snapcase a couple times. So I, uh, I was talking um, a couple weeks ago, and I said that it was like the weirdest lineup. The one time I saw him, I saw him with uh, Drop Dead, uh, which is we like just them and Drop Dead on, in in one show. It was in Connecticut, and I saw. Uh, um, Coming Correct also played that show too, oh in, in a band called <laughs> in, in a band called Voorhees, which was like it was like just such a weird lineup. That's rad. But I, I know Voorhees. Um, I know Voorhees as well. That's a, that's a crazy that's a crazy lineup. Like if it was like one or two of those bands together, it would make sense. But then all of them all of them at once. Yeah, all of them together. was It was just so <laughs> odd. I, I saw the flyer and then we went. It was just such a strange, strange show. But it was it was an awesome show, too. It was a great show, too. But I mean, uh, it was just very yeah. weird. Remember one time we, one time Funeral Diner played in Austin. We, um, we played with Phobia. And that was, that was a weird lineup. And yeah. The, the people who were there to see Phobia were not there to see us. Yeah. At all. <laughs> <laughs> now, were you uh, you a fan of Phobia? Oh yeah, Phobia rocks. I was I was stoked. We we got to play with Sour Sourvein and Phobia on the same show, and I I was stoked. But yeah. uh, their, their fans were not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so, so going back to like high school and and you, and first getting into bands, I know I know uh, your first band, you, like you don't really like to talk about too much, um, but uh, not Walking, but the one before that, you kind of yeah, say cheese. My ska punk band from yeah. from uh, when I was sixteen years old. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> it was the first uh, first band to ever, um, and we 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 played our we played only one show out of town. And it was at a on a uh, mushroom farm in Arroyo Grande. Really? Was, yeah. <laughs> in, like the garage of a, of, a, of, a, of a mushroom farm in Arroyo Grande. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, that was that was interesting. We were that was like it was that was when I was starting to get into heavier music. So it was like it was you know the the, the end of my my ska pop punk. Yeah. And then getting into hardcore around that time, yeah. there was a, there was a uh, a uh, hardcore like kind of Victory Records style band in Atascadero called Persevere, and uh, members of Persevere went on to carry on and uh, couple other things. But uh, yeah, the, so seeing Persevere like uh, play was started changing, you know, changing my interests. And yeah, I was. Uh, getting more into that sort of stuff. Now, what made you want to be a vocalist? I know, like, I uh, sang in a few bands, too. No, nothing, like, crazy. Um, but, like, what made you want to be a front man? And, and I, like, honestly, when I first started, I was nervous. Like, so it's it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like a ner nervous thing, you know? Yeah. I, you know, honestly, I, um, I'm i just not very, I'm not very musically talented. And I, I play bass, but not very well. And I never have. <laughs> and and I, I just don't see it happening at any point. But I, I mean, I still enjoy doing it. And but I, I just not very good. And so being a front man was something I could do. <laughs> and to like actually make work. And it, you know, I found out. Turns out I can. Turns out I can sing pretty good. So it worked out for for you know however long. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And that was yeah. That was it. That was it. Okay. Yeah, with with walking now, I can't find like um, I was talking to Tom Schlatter and he was like, that's how I found out you were in that band walking. But I can't find anything from that band. Is there anything like out there? You know, honestly, um, I was thinking about that the other day. I <laughs> there's uh, we had a we had a five song CD on Deep Six Records, which was which was pretty awesome to me at the time. Like, I, yeah, you know, I was I was like my, my my first real band. And we got to be on the same label as Infest, and like I was just like I was I was over the moon, and um, but I, I you know that that CD is not online. I can't even couldn't even find it on YouTube. I was curious that was the other day. I was like checking to see if somebody had uploaded it to YouTube or anything, and it's not there. Um, and then we had a three song seven inch that we did as well. Yeah. Um, and that's and the, yeah, that's not that's not anywhere either. So. Um, the uh, I could uh, I could probably uh, I could probably see about getting that on the internet somewhere. Yeah, I would I would love to hear it. And and um, what what did it sound like? It, for, it was, uh, I didn't get to see it, so, so I didn't get to see you guys play. So like, what what yeah. was it sound like? It was uh, we were like um, kind of like Dillinger Escape Plan, Coalesce, tech hardcore kind of stuff, technical hardcore. Yeah, and. Uh, but we had we had two like pretty amazing guitar players. So there were some um, the the last few songs we wrote had these just like kind of really cool guitar harmonies like that I I you know I'm still like kind of amazed that we did that when we were that young. Like yeah, we, we did one tour of the U.S. as well. That's how I met Tom. That yeah, I, yeah, I I heard him talking about it. That's why, I, like, that's how I knew about it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so we were uh, we had a bunch of shows fall through, and because we we were we we poorly it was a very poorly planned first tour, um, and uh, and we had a bunch of shows fall through. So the assistant ended up letting us uh, tag along with them for about a week, and it was it was really saved us as well as, you know, let me hang out with Tom and we're, we're still friends. But I've known him since, yeah, since 
2001 since that tour. And, yeah. What kind? What now? What kind of bands were you? Did you play with uh, during that tour? And did you make it up up to Massachusetts or or? Yeah, we made well. We made it past Massachusetts, but our show had fallen through, so we didn't actually play. <laughs> yeah. And we just uh, stayed at a friend's house there. <laughs> and uh, we made it yeah, in Boston, and that, that was that was that was our Massachusetts <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, experience uh, on that walking tour. Um, but yeah. We we played in uh, we ended up playing in Connecticut with a, a, like a weird like backyard show house show with um with the assistant and uh, we and then we went then we went back west with them. Yeah, you play you I um I was listening to an interview you you uh, kind of went out with Ruheda at first too right? Yeah yeah Ruheda it was us and Ruheda for the first first few days of that tour as well. Yeah. Um, and this was awesome. I love that band. And those, uh, those guys are great. Uh, Jerry is still one of my favorite drummers of all yeah. all time in the in hardcore. Like, yeah, you must have been sto stoked on your first tour to get to play with, you know, The Assistant and Ruheda and... and um, it, was, it was amazing. It, like, I, I mean, it was a it was a complete clusterfuck. Like, we, I can't emphasize how badly we planned it. But it ended up being pretty great. We, we played with... Um, we played one of Jerome's Dream Flash shows as well. Like we you know, played with Planes Mistaken for Stars and Every Time I Die in, Car in South Carolina and like um, got to stay at we, yeah we, we stayed at the Planes guys' house in Denver on the way back and they were really great and we got to um, uh, that was when I reconnected with Sean Decker uh, from Como Rosalia and Middleman Records I was on that tour. That was crazy. Um, met the Jake Refrain guys, who are, I'm still really good friends with, and um, played with the Now and Neil Perry. I, it was crazy good. I mean, we just we got really lucky, even though oh we played we played the singer of Harvest. Oh band, really? Which at the time I was like, you know, I, I love Harvest. So that yeah, was Harvest is amazing. <laughs> I love Harvest yeah. too. Yeah. So it was I, it was like it was so poorly planned, and we had no right being able to play these great shows, but we ended up doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's amazing. Um, so so what was the transition from walking to uh, Funeral Diner? I, I know they had been playing before you got into um, Funeral Diner. Yeah, I got um I got kicked out of walking. I was I was let go <laughs> after that first tour, um, and uh, and then it kind of coincided like Funeral Diner was getting ready to do some more touring and. Um, Dan, the guitar player, didn't want to do vocals anymore. So they, they just asked me if I wanted to, and I, I just got out of that band. So, and I like, I like Funeral Diner. We played with them a lot, and uh, and because the they were from Half Moon Bay, and most of the people from Walkin were from Half Moon Bay as well. Oh no kidding! So there was, uh, and we knew each other and played played shows together before that. Uh, one crazy coincidence on that tour. We played Alexander Key's house in uh, Reading, Pennsylvania. And uh, on the walking tour, we showed up and Staircase and Funeral Diner were on tour. And we, so we ended up playing. Oh, no kidding. Diner. And it was, and we got, it got even weirder than that. He, um, one of the other bands playing, this engine burns. I went to high school with one of the guys in that band. Oh, really? And, yeah. And so we just like jumped on the show and. There's two half moon bay bands and the dude Rory I went to high school with and like my tiny little, you know, town and you know, it was, it was Yeah, that that's crazy. Play across the country too. Right? I know, that's great that's crazy. Um that was the that was the first time I heard Funeral Diner was the um Staircase Funeral Diner split um album. Yeah, yeah I think that's a great record. I think yeah. <laughs> I love I love that record. Um it's awesome, and they put out they put out different to potential after that, and then they then they asked me to join, and that was so. And yeah. what was the first thing you recorded with them? Uh, the Wicked EP, and then the uh, the split seven inch was on. We recorded those at the same time. Nice, nice. Uh, so, um, what was the first tour of Funeral Diner like? Who did you go out with on that first tour when you when you joined? Um, you know, we we it was a pretty solo tour. We played some shows with Like a Fusion Run. 
we played a, a few dates with them, which is, is great. I love playing with those dudes. They're the best. Um, and just like, it was just always so much fun. And like, yeah, and, and uh, great band to see every night. Like, awesome. so, and, that, and that was the, the tour where I saw you, right? Yeah, that was that, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That, like I said, that that show was. Uh, I'm I'm just glad I got to videotape it and and have some sort of history of about it. You know what I mean? That show was that, yeah that, yeah like we already we already touched on it. That show was great. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like a huge um, Darters um, fan, and and as the sunsets, I've known Lex, John, and, and Nick for a long time, and um, did they like influence me when I got into bands? Uh, was there anybody like right when you started Funeral Diner and Walking like that you like? Not not like wanted to be like, but what kind of like almost uh you know a blueprint of what you wanted to do um I mean, I was always trying to push it towards Coalesce. they're my Coalesce is my favorite hardcore band yeah so when 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 walking started, I was like, no, let's make this more like like this, and like I would try and push it more in that direction, yeah um and uh and you know, we all we all really like going to escape plan and walking through and so it was that and that sort of technicality in the music was uh was a big part of what we were trying to do. Yeah. Um, and then I yeah, I was just I was really um I was really influenced vocally by Damnation A D and uh and Snapcase and um I was trying to, you know, trying to go more and, and then and uh, and then on the emo side, uh, Mohinder are um, one of my big biggest like vocal influences. Yeah, yeah. Now, was so, that kind of how you 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 your love for emo and stuff like that kind of push you ter towards uh, Sterling Says or? Uh, you no, know, um, that that was more. Uh, I I'm also you know I'm I, I'm a huge uh, I'm a huge like. Dinosaur Junior. Di yeah, it kind of sounds like Dinosaur Junior, or like a little bit of pavement in there, or, and yeah. like a hint of like, I, like for, at first it was almost like a little pie ball like vocal style, a little tiny bit, you know? Yeah. So that yeah. So I'm I'm also like very very into like '90s alternative and you know the Muffs and like all that stuff. Like it was also super in, influential to me. So that was Sterling. What Sterling says, I I I, uh, I got real lucky. I just uh, worked with somebody who knew Lucas, the singer, guitar player. Yeah. And uh, he he just sort of, like, didn't have a band. So we just sort of started playing. And that's how Sterling Stark started. And that was, that was amazing to play with Lucas. He's just, he's, he's a ungodly talent. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm just, he's constantly amazed playing with him. It's amazing. And you joined that band, and it, was it a uh, 2010 you joined that band, or was it before then? Uh, it was before that, but, but yeah, but um, you know that and Sterling says overlapped a little bit, so it was 2007, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, 2007 when Sterling says started, and that was the same year, you know, then it ended, but it was there was a little overlap there. Yeah, and and what and uh, were you in Takaru and Funeral Diner at the same time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and how did that kind of, how did you kind of get into that? I know like you knew Sean from uh, yeah. Days Refrain, so. Yeah, I knew Sean from Days Refrain, that's basically it. That's, that's, and that's how that started, was he wanted to do a new band in San Francisco, and I wanted to play bass in a band. Was that the first time you played bass in a band? It was, yeah. Yeah, I'd always played, I'd always like played bass by my, you know, self sort of, but I was never, yeah. never in a band. Yeah, and and were you kind of like like I know they're a little heavier than than Funeral Diner. Was that kind of like what intrigued you? Because kind of like your Coalesce is your favorite band, so they're they're not not like Coalesce, but I'm saying they're heavier. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that, I mean it's and I and that's like I've always I always want to be in a heavier band. Like that's you know <laughs> that's just like what really appeals to me. I, I I it always it's always like. I just always kind of want to be in a heavier band, and like that, that uh, Takaru helped me get that out of out of me. And um, I, I was, uh, I would have. I'm, I'm, I'm still looking to 
being a heavier band at this point in yeah. my life. And, uh, you know, I, I just, because I love, yeah, I love that. I, I love that stuff. I love, like, um, disembody and, like, the, and, uh, like, my new, my new favorite band is Jesus Peace. Of, as far yeah, as, like, as so far good. As newer, newer bands, like, I can't, like, yeah, Dead Guy, but, like, but Jesus Peace, holy shit, man, like, like, that band is just head and shoulders above any other, like, hardcore band. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, like, it's just, like, crazy good. Yeah, they're so heavy. <laughs> they're so heavy, so good. And that, and that like, really appeals to me, so I, that was really, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like I like them and I like Vane too. Vane, yeah. and Vane, is- Vane are amazing. I, um, and you know, I mean, there's a lot of really good stuff like like Chamber from Tennessee, um, uh, Meth from Chicago, hmm. um, uh, got Gift from God. Like, there's a lot of yeah, cool. Gift from Gift from God is so good too. I uh, I love that band. Hey, just great stuff and like the you know the kids. Are all right, like they're, <laughs> they're doing really, really good stuff. So yeah. Um, now, now back in the day, were you were you a? Uh, I know that you like that kind of the music. Were you were you a mosher back in the day? Did you get in the pit and? Uh... No, I I had my I had my moshing. I moshed a little. I moshed a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was very. Uh, there's a. There there was a great. Uh, uh, Earth Crisis show in San Francisco in the late 90s uh, where they played with Madball and somebody made somebody in the pit and at the show and it was like one of those shows and, yeah. um, but that was a that was a, a big it was a high point uh, for the moshing and um, and then uh, seeing Disembodied with the Coquetry and uh, Coquetry and Silver Crystal yeah this little, uh, this little club yeah and uh, that was you know another uh, another big, uh, another big mosh band. But I've I've never really been that much of a. I'm I'm more of a I'm more of a head banger. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I got to see Disembodied a couple times up up in uh, New Hampshire. There was a club up here in uh, Rochester, New Hampshire, um, and I got to see them. I actually made a flyer um, for, for the show, uh, because my, uh, I was friends with, um, this band Ukla the Mock that was on Life Sentence Records. <laughs> and, uh, I also played in a band with two, two of the guys from Ukla the Mock. Uh, we just did like a small little demo. Um, but it, it was fun. And, and that's where I got to see Disembodied, uh, twice, but like back in the late, late nineties, yeah. it was, yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. uh, really fun. Yeah. They were crazy good. Um, so, so, um, Tell me about the scene in San Francisco. I know you live in LA now, but how was yeah. the scene back then for like, um, you know, hardcore and punk and, and screamo, which which I'm not a huge fan of that that terminology for yeah. genre <laughs> or scrams. I don't scrams it, drives me crazy. I, I, I just yeah. can't say it. I know. What it, I I I I I remember when that term started getting used, and I was just very confused about it, and uh, never never really sat well with me. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it could be our age. It could be our age because I can't even use it. I don't even like to say it. <laughs> I, 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 I sometimes like make little jokes about it, but I, I can't even usually do that. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, I mean, the scene was, even San Francisco was great. Like in the, the, the uh, late nineties, early two thousands. And I, we, there were just, there were good places to play. Um, Gilman's always been there. Uh, there was like good stuff like further south in San Jose area going on. Um, all in the East Bay. The Sacramento has always been kind of weird, but there's still places to play there. Yeah. And, uh, and then um, when you come down to Los Angeles, there were really cool. We got to walk and play the old Tooth Cafe, um, which was really great. We got, uh, I played the smell a few times and like, a few other great, uh, awesome places to play down there. Um, yeah. And then uh, San Francisco, where there was uh, there was this gallery that we would have shows at um, for a while. That was really great. Um, from I went did a lot of shows there. Che Cafe was was always been good. 
Um, yeah. So it was, you know, within California, it was great. Yeah, great. Yeah. Place to, to tour and always, always good bands. So you know, especially in the Bay Area, just tons of good bands. Yeah. Now, has it changed because of because of uh, the businesses coming in and kind of the artsy part yeah. of San Francisco yeah. kind of going, you know? Yeah. Totally. Uh, oh. uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not there anymore, so there might be there might be stuff going on that I don't know about. But as far as like you know, my group of friends and what I'm connected to, it's it's definitely changed a lot. Like, there's no you know, there's no Gilman's still there, but. Uh, a lot of other places where it's gone. And yeah. Happens again, so. Yeah. Um, now, like, uh, for me in the East Coast, uh, I saw, you know, Converge and Cave In and Piebald and, and um, uh, there were Wires and, and bands like that, uh, like a bunch of times up here. Now, what were the bands that you had seen that would, that are amazing that, that you've seen a bunch of times that, that uh, meant a lot to you? I mean, was Yafikoto or, or Portraits yeah, oh, of yeah. Past? Yeah, well, that, so that's the thing is like we were the bands that I got to see a lot that were California bands were all like friends, so it was it was a little yeah like California. A lot of the bands didn't they just didn't play as much or you know like I wasn't seeing Strife every weekend or anything like that. Yeah, it was uh, uh, but yeah, I mean Yaka Toto for sure. We I mean we played with them a ton. And I got to see them all the time. That was great. I, yeah. I fucking love that band. Like, um, a lot. <laughs> so, uh, I, was, I was just listening to the, uh, Casey did a, uh, Turned Out a Punk, uh, Damien from Fuck Up podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah Casey did that re uh, a while ago. And I, I just recently listened to it. And that was, that was pretty cool. Um, to hear him talk about it you know, the Santa Cruz scene and all that. Santa Cruz is always great. I, I love playing there. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's always good shows there. There's a, a, a venue called the Laurel House, which is a house show, the house that place, that uh, where me and uh, the fairy that I do repeater records with, yeah. uh, that's kind of where we met and became friends. Oh, no kidding. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, Santa Cruz. I I, uh, I got to see one show in California. Me being an East Coast guy, I, I don't really, <laughs> I don't travel too much. But um, I was visiting a friend in Sacramento, um, and I got to see. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this band, Unless. I saw Unless and Pink Razors in Davis, California. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, that was the only cal that was my only exposure to California. Uh, the the scene down there. I don't I don't know if Davis is a popping city, but uh, it seemed like a decent show. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's like Davis is a college town. It's like, and, and like very much a college town, not like, you know, the town wouldn't exist if the college wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, uh, that, that's rad that you got to see that. Um, I, I, uh, other than touring, I've seen only a few shows on the East Coast. Um, but I remember going to uh, Western Mass with, with Rain when they were over from Italy one time. Yeah. And that was, that was really fun. That was at the uh, Flywheel, um, which was, that was a great, that was a great show. Yeah. Uh, and they, and I, then I love the, I just love those guys. They made the best. Yeah, they're so good. I miss <laughs> that, I miss that tour too. I was, I was so pissed. Like, a lot of the time I'd like, I tried to go to as many shows as I could, and um, within like I, I think I went to a million shows within like 2000 to like 2006, and then I kind of fell off, and I started going to hip hop shows, and yeah. then like just recently, like the past three years, I started uh, like going back to heavy shows and still still going to hip hop shows as well. But um, I kind of fell off from like 2006 to I don't know. It was probably like like a good 10 year span where I didn't really get to see t too much, which uh, which um, I regret, but I mean, and I tried to record as much as I could when I was there. You have to choose. You, gotta, you have to choose sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I like that about your. Uh, I've, I've always really liked that about your Instagram as well. All the hip hop, all the hip hop shows you also post. That's just, those are always really cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I. I think in 1985 I, I got exposed to it and then I was I was uh 
like I, my start was like MTV stuff. I was like huge into the like the police and Clash and and uh, even like Sticks and stuff like that. If I saw a video, I would write it down in in '82. And then in '84, I got to see SSD and DYS in Boston when I was 12 years old. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. And <laughs> that was that was my my, <laughs> my my cousin's friend was like, "Hey, do you want to go to a punk show?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." And he brings me to that, and I was like. I was scared, but it was it. It opened my eyes to punk and and hardcore, and I fell in love. But I was too scared to go back, so I didn't go back for another three years. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and that's when I started seeing like, um, you know, Youth of Today and Gorilla Biscuits and Leeway and Agnostic Front and stuff like that. Um, but uh, that was that was my my first punk hardcore show was SSD and DYS at Gallery East in Boston. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Like, I, like. The idea of SSD playing a show is just sort of like a concept to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I'll be forty nine in, in a month, so yeah. um, I was just on the cusp of yeah. of seeing them. You know what I mean? They're like, I think the next year they kind of went into that different style of of, uh, um, you know, they kind of didn't do what they were doing earlier on. They kind of did like a, not metalish, but they, their music changed a little bit yeah. like right afterwards. So I kind of got to see them right at the, at the yeah. end of their, you know, golden years, I guess you would say. Yeah. But it scared me. I had hair like down to here and nobody had anywhere close to hair like that in there. And I was like, <laughs> oh no, like <laughs> I'm going to get killed in here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was a great, you know, great uh experience and a good memory for me um but then then like i said i i got into hip-hop and i was still into hip-hop and and hardcore and stuff like that but the whole time so um yeah. it's just a love for me and 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 i love doing these talks and still talking about um you know hardcore and punk uh because i love it every day i listen to it i listen to hip-hop and i listen to hardcore yeah. every single day it, it never stops for me you know yeah yeah like i, yeah, like I was saying like i got i I was, you know, like, when I was a kid, I was in, I got into a little bit of hip-hop, like Eric B and Rockham and stuff, but I wasn't, I didn't really get into it until I had Wu-Tang in the 90s, and then I was, then I was like, that, you know, and that, that all came along with, like, watching skate videos and, like, every, all that stuff, but I, I got way into that stuff. Yeah. Early 90s. Now were you a big were you a big E forty and two short fan after after that? <laughs> yeah, huge E forty. <laughs> and then and then the whole like the whole hyphy the all the hyphy stuff that was happening. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were we were there, you know, we were in the bay at the time. It was, it was that was that was great. It was off off the hook. Um loved all that. Uh like yeah, like Peak the Sneak and Max Gray, like I'm I'm still very into that. Yeah. That too. Um I was in I I was got into a little bit into like living legends and like uh that kind of that whole like backpacker scene when i yeah. first moved to sf in 97 but it didn't that didn't quite stick with me as much as like you know the, yeah the IP stuff. <laughs> yeah the west coast hip-hop is so good too i mean i love souls of, i'm a huge souls of mischief fan and and uh and um, hieroglyphics and and also the far side i'm like a huge far side fan too i have i have tattoos on both shoulders of like two of the guys from far side uh i met fat lip and, and slim kid three and like showed them and the, like i was huge into far side until like and then they broke up and it kind of crushed my my yeah. uh heart but um <laughs> i was a big far side fan would no doubt i said yeah that's that's, that's so good um uh, um, <laughs> I, I get sidetracked. Sorry, I get sidetracked. Um, but uh, going back to Funeral Diner, um, what was your favorite um body of work that you did with Funeral Diner? Um, I, you know, I, 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 I like everything. I like everything we did. I, I was, I was just so amped on being in that band, and like it was just we were we put in a lot of work. And I, I love that about the band. Like just the amount of work we put in was great. Um, and but when it, yeah, if it, when it comes down to it, like the underdark is still my like kind of crowning achievement as far as music goes up to, up to this point. Like it's a you know it was just so it was so timely with what like I was into and what I was like feeling at the time. 
it's a it's a concept album about Dungeons and Dragons and like political politics. So that was you know I uh, I'm amazed that I got to write a concept album about Dungeons and Dragons. That was yeah. That was, Still, that's still uh, cool to me. <laughs> yeah. Now, was it, now were were the other guys into Dungeons and Dragons, or you yeah, kind of yeah, brought most, that? Most of the band was. Yeah. Yeah. So, like four four fifths of the band was very into D and D, so it helped get yeah. that. Out. Now, you guys put out. Um, didn't you guys put out um, another? Was it you put out something else that same year? Didn't you? Was the swept under the, the same year? Yeah. Left Under was a year later. Year later? Yeah, I think. Because um, it was 15 years. Or it's, yeah, it was 15 years for The Underdark this year. Yeah, oh, really? Uh, the Underdark is so good. It's definitely my favorite Funeral Diner album. I, I, lo I, I feel like everybody loves that album, too. Everybody that I talk to, they're like, they, they say that's the, that's the Funeral Diner album that they go to. You know what I mean? There's some people. There's some people who think that, like, the band was better before I joined, but <laughs> really, <laughs> wow, really. There's, there's people out there. I don't know. I, I'm, I don't. I don't know any of them. They're not my friends. But <laughs> I, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen comments about like you know like oh they they were they were they were better before that or whatever. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like like I said, the Underdark is my favorite, and Swept Under is, is a is a close like it's close. It's it's up there for me too. I I love that. Except Under was really was really cool to do as well. Like I uh, getting to do the album with with Shetel, uh from uh, in Norway, and uh, his label is really cool. And uh, he was in um, he was in uh, the the Birds of Survive, Air Force of the Trees, and some other like emo bands in Norway. Yeah, and he was a great guy, and he did a really good job with that release. It looked beautiful. Um, and uh, I love those songs too. So that was that was really cool. Um, we got to do a CD release of that in Japan as well, um, which was cool. Uh, and that was because we did we did a, we did three tours there. Yeah. Oh, no. How was how was playing out there? Fun. It was fun. It was fun. It was, it was a little weird. Um, but uh, but we had. We had good shows, and I was toured with good bands and played with really good bands. Um, so that was, uh, but yeah, a little weird. Um, and I'll, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. How to explain it? It just wasn't. Uh, it just uh, was an interesting scene. Yeah. Now the last, the last thing that you recorded with Funeral Diner, um, it, it wasn't the Ampere split, was it, or was it? Uh, no, it was the doors open. Oh, doors open. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But that, but the split was right before that, right? Yeah, yeah. The split was right before that, and then the, uh, and then the Spencer Sad Tape had just said there were three song CD that we put out. So there was that too. That was that that three song CD was uh, the, and then doors open, and then and and the uh, and the Empire split were all kind of around the same time. Yeah, yeah. Now, how did, how did uh, you guys end Funeral Diner? Was it just kind of? It just sort of was. It just sort of felt like it was time, I guess. Um, uh, other pe people were doing other projects, and um, we just you know had some. We didn't. We had some. We had some less than encouraging reception, and you know we just the shows weren't getting any bigger, and like. We were just sort of felt kind of stuff. We never really broke up. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> we just sort of stopped playing. <laughs> like it, it was, yeah. Yeah. Now, is yeah. there? Um, do you ever think about uh, doing like a reunion tour with? Uh, no, no. 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 I know uh, some some people are like, yeah, we'd love to do it. And then other people are like, no, nah, that was just a yeah, part of I our past, they, and like we like to keep it that way. Yeah, and it's there's. It's just not, yeah, not everybody in the band's on the same page, so it's never really been an option, and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, the, I think reunion shows are great. I'm, I'm not against reunion I'm not against reunion shows at all. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, just like I was talking to Jason Green at Orchid, and he's like, no way. There's no yeah. way I would do or Orchid reunion. <laughs> like, 
and I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying no way. I, but I, I do, I realize, you know, if you're going to do it, everybody has to be on board. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's how that goes. Uh, but I do, I do like, I do like when bands do reunions. I'm not, I'm, I know there are people who hate that, but. Yeah, I mean, J Jerome's dream last year was amazing. Yeah. I went, I went and saw that show. I was blown away by it. I was, I it like brought me back to back in the day, and they sounded so so goddamn good too. Like yeah. seeing them live again, I was I was blown away when I saw that that show, uh, and I'm glad to see him back. Uh, you know what I mean? And same thing. Not that daughters, but daughters had a big gap where they weren't yeah. playing, and then they yeah. got back together again. I, like I love that, especially if they're gonna make. Uh, amazing music again, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what, like talking about going back to like Dinosaur Jr. too. Like, you know, they they got back together with their original three piece and put out one of their best records. Like, yeah, why would, why would you not want that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially for the fans and them too, as yeah, well. Yeah, totally. They're like, yeah, yeah. I, I've always I've always been kind of weird weirded out by people who are like against reunions on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so um, your the last band you were in was, or are you in a band right now? Actually, I'm in a band right now. Yeah, I'm in a band called Last Good Sleep. Oh, Last Good Sleep. Yeah, I was just gonna talk about that here in LA. Yeah, um, we're still we're still a band. Um, and then I was in a band called Pills, uh in San Francisco as well. Um, they kept going after I moved and got another singer, and they have a they have a full one coming out on um, FS oh, Team nice. uh, soon. Nice. Uh, and it's great. I've heard it. It's fucking awesome. Really? Uh, nice. FS Team's a great label, too. Uh, Moxie Beat just came out on that. That record just came out on FS Team, and uh, they're, they've, they've been friends for a long time. Yeah. They were in a band called Dogs of Ire before uh, Moxie Beat, and, and that, that record's amazing. The yeah. Like coming out. But yeah, and then after. After Pills, I moved to LA, and I, there were a few years where I wasn't playing music. But then, uh, uh, last good sleep, I've been playing music since then. Yeah, and that and that like that seems more emo-ish to me than than yeah. Sterling says. You know what I mean? In in a in a almost like a more heavier way though, like that with the kind of the yelled vocals, and and then you it, there's some regular like um, you know vocal harmonies in there as well you know what i mean um i really enjoyed it but i o i only heard i think three songs is there more out there that you can listen to no we we've only actually we've only got we really only have like at this point we only have one song on Bandcamp, yeah i think and uh or maybe no three songs there's three songs on yeah. yeah three so three songs but uh we have a we have a, a demo we've been working on for a really long time that got Stop, cut short because of COVID, um, and uh, and it's it's almost done. We just haven't been able to put the finishing touches on it. Seven songs. Yeah. So, um, yeah. how how was uh how I know you've lived in LA for a while and, and you haven't been in San Francisco for a while, but um, how was the transition from San Francisco to LA for you? Uh, it was fun. It was fine. I I've always loved LA. Um, my. Uh, my mom is from Riverside, which is uh, Inland Empire, a little further, a little further south and east from LA. So I grew up going to Riverside and being around LA. And then, uh, and then my brother and sister both ended up in LA after college. So I was, you know, I was I was around, and yeah. I was, I was enjoyed LA, and I was like coming down here to play shows too. So it was uh, it was it was pretty easy. Yeah, and and how's the, how's the scene in LA compared to San Francisco? Like punk, punk, and like heavier band wise, you know? It's um, it's I mean, it's good. I, I it's really good. I there's a ton of great bands, especially when I moved here. I I got right into new music and going to see shows and um like uh in shows and like it's a little they're a little further out. You know, you can't. It's not as it's not as um localized. As San Francisco, yeah, but that kind of allows for more, um, more, uh, more diversity in the scene and more like uh, more you know different types of music. So like when I moved here, there was this band Heritage Unit who 
like blew me away at like the first show I got to go see. And uh they and Nouveau Aspira, who are from here, are like one of my favorites. Um absolutely love that band. The Moxie Beater down here on the other side. Um uh who else? Uh this band Left to Stay and uh yeah, they're from, they're from here, I think they broke up. Um and uh and uh, Stacy, this other another LA band that were amazing. Then the member Ted showed members uh, left to and Stacy. Those were I got to see both those bands early on when I moved here. And just really great stuff. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of there's a ton of great bands. Going on. Yeah, that's a, that's that's awesome. Um, so um, uh, lastly, what I would want, want what I want to talk about is um how how Repeater Records started and yeah. um how it's going and, and, and uh, let everybody know. I mean, I think everybody knows about the UNI um, discography yeah. okay. that came out, but, but talk about it because I mean, they look amazing. The, the layout is, is awesome. Uh, and plus all the, all the records that um, you put out so far are, 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 you know, some of my favorites. And uh, what do you have in store down the, down the road for repeat records? Um. We have a few, um, we, we're, I mean, it's me and my friend Chris, so it's just two of us. And it's more of a, you know, more of a hobby than anything else. And um, we just started doing it because we want to, we want to stay connected to hardcore and punk, you know, in any way we can at this point. And, you know, there's a lot going on in both our lives, but we still want to make time to, uh, to do that. And uh, that's kind of how Repeater started. And so we wanted to put the underdog out to start with because I know a guy in the band, so I was able to get that going quickly. And uh, we, and just like, we, you know, that the prices, the out of print vinyl prices are ridiculous. So we didn't, nobody should be paying a bunch of money for it. You know, I don't know that's it. Yeah, yeah, it, it gets crazy. <laughs> so, it gets crazy. Yeah, so we just um, we thought we'd just start with that one, uh, and then Studio Caterpillar was a total hail mary. Like we, we uh, Chris just emailed them out of the blue, and yeah. uh, then that became our second release, and it's still our our biggest release at this point. Um, but that was great uh, to be able to do that as our as our second release uh, yeah. and, uh, and then the, the Driving Stain Up a Wall EP was our third that was just you know continuation of City of Caterpillar stuff um, and those I, I love those guys they, they yeah really, they're so good with just a lot of a lot of um, uh, I, I had played with them in the early 2000s a few times um, in Walken and uh, Funeral Diner but we weren't like we weren't close or anything. Yeah. Uh, and so that was it was really great to like get to know them through doing the record and um, and uh, just be able to be, to be able to help them like start playing again was awesome. Yeah, yeah. The, and then uh, then we did the uh, Broken Hearts of Blues LP, which um, I've always I've I've always been a big fan of that record, and they just mentioned kind of tongue-in-cheek on Facebook if anybody wanted to put their record out mm. and I, I emailed them and was like you know <laughs> I <did> yeah <laughs> and uh and then gospel was another just like cold call email like uh, and that was another band I played with a few times yeah but we didn't really wasn't really buddies with or anything but so then we got to the moon is a dead world it's such a such an amazing record like oh. it's a, like I, it's com uh, like a com total gym from that time yeah yeah, yeah. Just seeing them live too, on top of that, is is oh, is mind blowing. Um, yeah, it's they're crazy. One of, they're one of the best live bands. Like they like they're so good. Um, the 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 drummer Matt, the drummer in Funeral Diner, like still cites uh, still cites Vinny uh, as like a you know somebody who made him want to be a better drummer. Like they're <laughs> yeah, players. Like they're so good. Yeah, they are good. Um, so that was that was fucking cool, and uh, and then um, yeah, and then Tom Tom got in touch about the UNI uh, discography. There's been talks 
with another label a few years ago about doing it because I asked him, I asked him a long time ago when we started to do uh, uh, the curtain falls, um, to reissue the curtain falls, and he was like, oh, we're already talking to somebody about doing a discography. Um, and I was saying, great, cool, let me know when it comes out because I want it. And then, yeah, yeah. And then a few years later, he, he got in contact. Got, or, I mean, not he didn't get in contact. We, we've been in contact forever, but he touched base about the uh, about doing the you and I discography. And that's been, you know, it's been a, a lot of heartache <laughs> getting it done because of the uh, delays and stuff, but it was, it was totally worth it. I, I yeah, yeah. It yeah. looks so good, too. Oh, it looks so good. And, to, and Tom is such a such a great guy, too, on top, yeah. top of that. So you being friends with him for a long time and, and just, like, He's just such a great, nice guy. Uh, it, it must be, uh, you know, a, a good relationship with you guys. Um, and, and I'm glad it came out, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I, 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 there was a few, we were touching there for a second. But <laughs> we had, uh, we had delays, we had delays right when we, delays right when we started it. Um, and then after those delays, we were told we couldn't, had samples on the record. Oh, really? The plant that we were at it at wouldn't do that, so we oh, had to God. find a new plant after. That. So we had to find a new plant. Yeah. After, you know, waiting until May, so it was like already a month late when we found out we had to get a new pressing plant. Yeah. And then we had to go through all the whole like you know test press, you know, and all that stuff. So, um, it was a, uh, yeah, it was a, uh, it was something something else to do yeah but it must feel good now that it's out and uh it, it feels great yeah it feels great that it's out and and to everybody who had to wait to get their record i'm really sorry <laughs> we're we're trying as hard as we can to be able to put out like 600 records and there's only two of us <laughs> so yeah yeah it was uh we we plan our best we get it out there and so i apologize to anybody who had to wait longer than all of that but everybody almost everybody was very cool about it yeah. Um, then the good thing that you you guys do too is you don't let people um, uh, buy multiple albums. It's just one, like yeah. especially with the clear vinyl, you, you, which I I appreciate. I love that that you, because people just buy. It's kind of like you know um, it, it happens everywhere. People buy a big stack and then they sell for a ridiculous amount of money. And then that's one of the reasons we started the labels. We just we don't like that. We don't like flippers, and they. Like there's a special place in hell for them. Mm. So. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we've had some problems. Yeah, we had some problems with it earlier on. Um, there's yeah, there's this one kid who, who's on a very short list of people who I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna find him and I'm gonna break his record. Mm. Um, but <laughs> but other than that, other than that, everyone's most people are pretty cool <laughs> yeah 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 I, but i just wanted to mention that because i appreciate that that you guys do that because i that drives me nuts and um especially for people that want it and then all of a sudden it's sold out because flippers yeah. just grab all of them and and, okay. and then like i said if you're trying to find it you, you're going to pay a hundred dollars for it or, what, or whatever they they charge you know what i mean it's it's not it's not cool and we just want people to have the music so um, now, do you have anything in the future lined up for Repeater Records? Is there, is there something maybe like that that you have that you want to announce or you, you want to do and you haven't? Um, um, unfortunately, we don't have anything we can announce right now, but we have we have a few things we're trying to do um, and a few things are lined up, but, um, but we're, we're still not, we're not, uh, we're not close enough to, to announce them yet. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want to start any rumors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, and um, I also wanted to ask. Uh, I know you're you're always talking about uh, you like being in heavy bands. Um, is is that still a thing in your future that you that you would do is get into like a real heavy band? God, I really hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. Uh, that would be awesome. I know. I want to be. I I just and I I mostly just want to play bass. I I don't want to. I don't want to scream in a. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to scream in a super heavy band, but I would love to play bass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anybody out there that's that's listening to this, get in touch I, with Seth. I do have some. I do have a, a project that I did with Tom and uh, and Sean from Middleman, 
and uh, and um, uh, uh, the guitar player from Mafanera from New Jersey. Um, it's called Lacrima, and I did vocals on that, and that's that that'll be coming out sometime. Oh, um, nice. Um, and it's so it's like a yeah, like a kind of quarantine band that we did. Uh, nice. What is it? What does it sound like? What's the sound? Uh, it's more it, it's more along the lines of female diner, like kind of yeah, screamery stuff. Yeah. But that's that's uh that'll be coming out at some point. So. Nice. Maybe. Yeah, it, it was fun. It's a great. I, it, it's great stuff. I, and and I don't feel weird saying that because I just did the vocals. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm a little more objective. Like it was, it was like. Yeah. Yeah. Good, um, good um, I don't want to hold you up too longer. So, so usually at every interview, I do a, a little rapid fire at the end. Um, so I got a few questions uh, I'll shoot at you. And uh, and um, so number one, favorite New England hardcore punk band for you? That's it, Steve. Easy. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, second question. What was the first punk hardcore show you attended? Um, the first non-local band show I attended was uh, the Doctor Strange Records Showcase in San Luis Obispo. So I saw Voodoo Glow Skulls, uh, just a uh, ribbon collision, brown, brown lobster tank, <laughs> and uh, I think that was it. But it was a pretty crazy show for you know it was ninety, it was ninety four. Ninety four. <laughs> Um, my next question, all-time favorite punk hardcore show you played? Or it could be like two or three. I, I know you've played so many shows. Um, yeah. Just like two or three that like meant the most to you. Uh, the, um, the first walk-in show was, uh, meant a lot to me. That was, that was crazy because it was the first like real band I was in. And it was at uh, Carmel High School in Monterey County. And I'm I'm from Monterey County, so it's kind of like it was kind of that was kind of rad. And uh, my actually my my uh, mom and my sister came, <laughs> so it was like and it was uh, that was it was just it was amazing to play in a my first like real band like that was so that was one. Um, another one was uh, was in um, Luxembourg, uh, and it was on our first. European tour in 2003, and that it was just like the the crowd didn't really know who we were, but the show was just so like it was just crazy good. Like everybody got so into it and so like stoked, and we they, we ended up playing like you know every song we knew, and then like a few others, and like it was just. Like it, it was, uh, it was crazy good. Um, another, another one that I, uh, uh um, that I, it was, it was uh, Sendai. We played in Sendai. It was crazy good. Uh, another time where like we weren't that well known, but the the room was packed and everybody was into it. And it just like, um, I it, it was, I was a. Uh, just really digging it, and like the energy is amazing. Um, and uh, then uh, one in America, <laughs> another one from America. <laughs> um, uh, gosh, I guess uh, when we played with Gospel at Gilman, uh, that show was. That show was amazing, and the uh, and then the Underdark release show at the bottom of the hill, too, with uh, with Sicario and Bullet Bin, and uh, yeah, that so okay. There, how about that? <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I, it, what it it reminds me when you were saying that that um, you know some people don't know bands, and then um, they see a band and they're just like 
the the energy and the feeling and and that's the best kind of feeling i i feel like i i'll, I'll always like back in the day when i saw bands i'm like oh i don't know who that is and the greatest feeling would be is they would blow me away and that and just like you 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 were talking about um i think that's that's an amazing feeling for you guys and and the fan the fans that are watching you know or the people just the the they attendees weren't, they weren't fans. They weren't just the well not fans attendees that's what i meant to say yeah <laughs> But uh, that that feeling always was great to me. You know what I mean. And then I would go research the band right afterwards. I was like, oh, what did they put out? Oh, they got any sh shirts over there I can get? You know what I mean. Uh, it's a, it's a good feeling. Yeah. Uh, my next question: All time favorite punk hardcore show you attended that you like watched and and were kind of blown away by? Um. Uh, gosh, there's so many. But uh. But I guess um, oh yeah, I, I, the uh, there was a, the the um, Orchid Red Scare Lightning Bolt uh, show uh, at uh, the Club Toka Breeze, the same place I I was talking about. I saw with somebody. Yeah, um, that show was just mind blowing. And then Chick 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 played too. Like they closed the show, so it was like this crazy good hardcore show and then like crazy good dance party yeah they, yeah <laughs> yeah it was it, that was like something else and i yeah that's that's definitely up there yeah that's that's uh that lineup right there is uh yeah. i mean i got to i got to see um those bands a lot on the east coast um yeah. i didn't see orchid too many times though i i think i only saw orchid like maybe three times um i saw lightning bolt a bunch of times though and, and uh red scare red scare um i don't think i ever saw red scare though i love red scare too yeah. it's like that's one of my regrets of never going to so, I, I never saw them so underrated that band was so good oh so good yeah and i yeah i saw them i, I went to both nights in that on that tour i went to oakland and, and san francisco yeah <laughs> so both good. Oh. Um, my next question is, uh, what was the last movie you watched? I'm a big movie guy, so I always ask this. I'm not a big movie guy at all. I don't watch movies, hardly. Uh, um, what did I see last? I, oh, I saw um, the Christopher Guest movie, uh, uh, For Your Consideration. It's the last movie I, I watched. How, how long ago was that that you, that you... I was probably April. April. Yeah. I'm just gonna, I, I, I don't watch movies. <laughs> some people do some people don't <laughs> uh, um and uh my last question is um if you've been listening to hip-hop lately what have you been listening to um the the hip-hop i've been listening to lately uh is um and mostly mostly older stuff uh, mostly not so uh and uh um Mostly Mac J and uh, and Supreme Clientele and just uh, you know, this is my go to. Yeah. Uh, far as hip hop, I, I, there's there's a lot of newer stuff that I've been interested in, but haven't really gotten into deep. Yeah. Now, so, yeah. I'm the same way. I I, I always. Um, I mean, if you dig in the crates, you can find new stuff. That's not like I'm a big '90s guy. Um, there's still stuff out there now, but you kind of have to like dig for it to, to find it, which, um, you know, I, I love that stuff too, but I always find myself going back to the nineties and, and just, uh, right. that's always my go-to is, is, is pretty much that era of hip hop. I, I think the, 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 the recent Griselda stuff has been really great. Yeah. Yeah. That's been good. That's real good stuff. And I, but I haven't gotten deep enough into it. So like, I can't, you know, I can tell you my favorite. Well, they put out they put out a release every every two months though between like Benny and Conway and 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 yeah, West yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. There's a there's a um I'll I'll let you know a little bit about um Daniel's son this um this guy from Toronto he's really good um if you ever if you ever see that Daniel son he's he's really good he's got he's got a bunch of stuff out and uh, he does a lot of stuff with a producer called Future Wave that th those two together are are pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, and Lucas, um, Lucas from Sterling Sight, he's starting a new uh, recording studio in Oakland with some with a with a hip hop crew, um, and he's he's a big recording guy, so so he he he's, he's into recording. Yeah. Um, 
because he's, he's starting a studio with uh, a new like Oakland uh, group that's that's getting pretty pretty big, I think. Um, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll send you their names. I'll send you them. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Let me know because um, I'm I, new music. I'm always I'm always down for. Um, and and my last question is, um, have you been what have you been listening to for newer like um, hardcore punk music out there now? Um, I have been that Moxie beat record, um, and uh, the Novo Oscuro that came out this year. Uh, the you know, uh, all the Jesus Beat stuff. Um, uh, uh, that new Com the new Coma Regalia record on mm. Middle Man Records is amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, Stormlight, the uh, uh, song from uh, Loma Prieta. Yeah. Uh, his project. Uh, I guess somebody at the door. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. We're, I, we're literally like mid two minutes left. <laughs> Sorry, um, yeah. <laughs> that's all right I'll, I'll wrap it up with you so you can get to the door um i just want to thank you so much for for doing this with me i appreciate it um uh you know i hope it, it wasn't too bad on you uh talking to a new hampshire guy it was awesome thank you i, I could have i could keep talking but <laughs> I, yeah yeah me too me too um yeah. i just want to say thank you have a great night stay safe and uh, uh we'll talk to you i'll talk to you yeah. soon because uh, yeah. i love getting going back and forth with you yeah. sounds good man all right thanks Seth. Thank you very much thank you take take care